You know, we're all so familiar with the story of Christ that I think perhaps we tend to forget how truly remarkable it is in its simplicity. There was a man born of Jewish parents in an obscure village. The child of a peasant woman, he grew up in another obscure village. And he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book, he never held office, he never owned a home, he never had a family. He never went to college and he never put his foot inside a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did any of the things that usually accompany greatness. And while still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away and he was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial and his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had, his coat. And when he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave. Nineteen wide centuries have come and gone and today he is the centerpiece of much of the human race. All the armies that ever marched and all the navies that were ever built and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. Father God, we thank you for your presence here with us today. We thank you that wherever we are, you are there. But as we meet together, all together, you're here in a special way in the presence of each one of us. I pray now that you will enable each of us to hear you speak to us in some way or other. Amen. Long ago and far away, there lived a man named Jesus. It sounds like the start of a fairy tale, but as the words Bing Crosby read in our video say, that man has had a greater impact on the real world, past, present, and future, than any other single person. When Don asked me if I would like to speak on Jesus at the end of the Life Expo week, I was quick to say that I would love to. Since then, I have been wondering exactly how to encapsulate the great I am who was and is and is to come into 20 minutes max, and believe it or not, I can't. I mentioned to some friends that my subject for today was Jesus, and they said, oh, only all the New Testament then. I said that actually I had already chosen my main reading as Isaiah 53 from the Old Testament. You've probably heard people say that Jesus could have been born anywhere in the world and at any time in history. The many ancient God-given prophecies recorded in the Old Testament say the opposite. The precise time and details of his birth were all identified long, long ago. One important factor in preparation for Jesus' birth was that he would be part of the line of David. In the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Saviour. Then in the New Testament, we find that both Mary and Joseph could trace their lineage back 1,000 years to King David. Another part of the preparation was that he would be born in Bethlehem. The prophet Micah said 700 years B.C., but you, Bethlehem, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. It might therefore have seemed odd that the angel Gabriel was sent to a young girl
who lived in Nazareth, nearly a hundred road miles away from Bethlehem, to tell her she would bear the baby who was the Son of God. But that was all part of the timing. At just that time, with Mary about nine months pregnant, Joseph would have to travel to Bethlehem, Royal David City and his family's hometown, to register in a census. So Jesus was born at just the right time, in just the right place, as well as the time and place of his birth being predicted in many Old Testament writings. Some say it was also written in the stars for those who know how to interpret them, including that amazingly bright star which led the Magi from the east to the stable or cave in Bethlehem. Do you remember the famous opening to Charles Dickens's Tale of Two Cities? Can you tell me the first couple of lines? It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. You could say that of the time of Jesus' arrival too, the time when God stepped onto the earthly stage as a human being. One of the things that made it the worst of times was the rule of Rome at that time. Life was cheap, whoever you were. Punishments were barbaric, whether or not a crime had actually been committed. Many deities were worshipped, and unless God Almighty is the focus of any worship, what is left is idolatry, devil worship. But Rome also helped towards making it the best of times, too. Travel and communication had never been so good. Rome's absolute power helped keep the known world mostly at peace, or at least not at war. They had a well-structured army and government, many Romans showing gratitude to their slaves by freeing them and giving them Roman citizenship. At the time of Jesus' birth, one of the menacing crowd, clouds overshadowing Israel was the presence of Herod the Great, a self-seeking puppet king of Rome, put on the Jewish throne as a supposedly Jewish ruler for the Jewish people to keep them quiet, but actually despised and hated by the Jews. As you know, during this past week at St. Mary's, we've enjoyed Life Expo here, an exhibition, or rather an experience, primarily for children, telling them about Jesus. It has been really great to work with people from our own and other churches, and with over 300 10 and 11-year-old school children who have come through our doors. Part of the tremendously technological and interactive exhibition was based on a timeline or lifeline showing where Jesus' earthly life fits into history and the scale of the time over which the prophecies of his birth and death were given centuries before he was born. The lifeline also showed how the impact and influence of Jesus' life has endured for so long, over 2,000 years. Our reading from Isaiah today is one of those prophecies which skeptics have doubted because it so closely fits the picture we have of Jesus bearing our sins and dying for us. They have doubted that it could possibly have been written any time before it actually happened, let alone 700 years earlier. Isaiah speaks of God's righteous servant, whom we recognize as Jesus Christ, being raised and lifted up. That's the end of chapter 52 of your checking, which you should. Then in today's chapter 53, we read these words of Isaiah. He was pierced for our transgressions. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. He was cut off from the land of the living. How could that not be Jesus? But Jesus' death is not the end, is it? 
And in the same chapter, Isaiah goes on to say or prophesy, after he has suffered, he will see the light of light. And there's more. Please do take time to read this at home, including from chapter 52, verse 13 of Isaiah. This is a very special Bible passage, one with which we should all be familiar. In the Life Exhibition, there were also two other themed pods, brightly colored octagonal tents in which about a dozen people could stand very closely. The children visited all three pods in groups of about 10 at a time, focusing on a particular aspect of Jesus' life. In the green pod, Life Talks, they talked about things Jesus said, his stories and parables and things he said about himself. And in the blue pod, Life Works, they looked at things Jesus did, particularly his miracles. Each pod was hosted by someone to guide the children through their 10 minutes, just 10 minutes there. The pod walls were covered inside and out with related facts, questions and pictures. Inside each pod was a circular table containing a small electronic tablet or iPad and headphones for each child, which met with very much appreciation. They took them around with them from pod to pod, responding on them to various questions and comments unknowingly generating an individual feedback sheet that would be returned to them back at school, affirming and encouraging them in appropriate ways. Next, everyone squeezed in together at the back of the church to watch a short video presentation, Life Giver, based on Jesus' death and resurrection, with glimpses of what we believe happened including the momentous statement, Jesus died, but death could not hold him. It ended with the words, some say he was the son of God. What do you think? As you might have already gathered, that was a question the children were asked repeatedly throughout the exhibition. What do you think? a question every one of us needs to answer regarding Jesus and to act upon. Finally, in our transformed church lounge, the cafe, and more questions, and more technology. As well as drinks and biscuits, each child had a small voting device to register their answers to several multiple choice questions with results being shown on the screen amidst great excitement. So right to the end, the children were really enjoying learning and the technology and being encouraged to think a little more about who Jesus was and is and about everything they had heard. Everything that was presented to the children was couched in terms of Christians believe or we believe. Even though there is more documented evidence on the life of Jesus than there is on the life of Julius Caesar, we had to make it clear we were not trying to impose our own beliefs upon them by implying that everyone believed in this way. Such, such events as these make a huge and lasting impression on many children and young people for all sorts of reasons. In today's largely anti-Christian society, we should probably be taking every opportunity to make such projects more accessible to youngsters, who otherwise would be extremely unlikely to encounter Jesus in their daily lives. This is our mission field. The RE teacher from one of the schools which visited was shocked, even mortified, to realize how very little her children knew about Christianity and was determined to do something about it. So now we pray. We pray that all those seeds sown through Life Expo 
will be prevented from being snatched away or choked by all the normal things that happen in children's lives. We pray for local children that teaching during Frinton Mission and at any of the church groups and Christian school clubs they attend, run by Sam and others, will help build up a true picture of who Jesus is and how very much he loves them. And we pray that they will take the step of asking Jesus into their lives and enter into abundant and eternal life for themselves. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. After all, this isn't just a history lesson. It truly is the stuff of life and death. Amen.